how can we be up 246 glorious Dow points when we're supposed to be in a bear market? I mean, aren't stocks about to collapse? Just you wait and see. Actually, the reason we can have a move like we did today is precisely because stocks still reflect this negative attitude. The house of pain. And do not reflect at all the notion that the economy actually could be on the upswing. House of pleasure. Most of the big money, the money that basically determines stock prices, particularly the trillions of dollars in hedge funds, is way too defensive or has made gigantic bets against the market that are now crushing the performance for their investors. I've been saying that all we need in order to go higher were some little signs that things are indeed better, that maybe some of the government's programs are working, and that housing is on firmer footing, meaning that people can sell their homes, meaning that transactions are actually happening. I stand here every day, and I try to give you little signs, little morsels, that some things are better. That, well, how about a good number from Red Lobster or Olive Garden, or maybe Ruby Tuesday, Chili's, or how about California Pizza Kitchen? We got all those this week. How about some nice sales from Whirlpool? Great results from Research in Motion. Dynamite Quarter from Best Buy. Unbelievable Bed Bath & Beyond results. Upside surprise, Corning. Taiwan Semi, Xilinx. But no, come out of here, give them. People keep dismissing the compendium of evidence as being what's known as one-off or anecdotal. They're wrong. They're wrong. The bears are wrong because there's just too many positives. There's too much empirical, not anecdotal, empirical evidence that when put together adds up to something very special and very big, a turn in the economy. <laughs> Nevertheless, the so-called smart money just refuses to pay attention. You know what those bears are doing? They're digging in their heels. The bias has become so negative. <laughs> That every company that says something good is doubted, even though the facts have changed and the situation has clearly improved. The idea that the economy could actually be recovering, how about this one, that many of the federal programs could be actually catching fire, that Bernanke and Geithner, both of whom at one time I were relentlessly criticized before they came around to my view and got proactive, could be getting it right. All these notions are held to be heretical, if they're even thought of at all. Listen, I gotta tell you, this isn't Pangloss. We're not Pollyannas in Kramerica. I am not wearing the rose colored glasses. We have to become less negative. The facts just won't let us go any other way. Today we saw the pain of staying bearish because the bullish stagecoach just pulled out of the station. And the name of that stagecoach? Wells Fargo. Today, the giant nationwide bank, a huge originator of mortgages, pre-announced much, much, much better than expected earnings. The kind of profit figure All aboard. that was so huge we can't ignore it anymore. After that number, we got a colossal animal spirited switch for the bears. The bull is now the elephant in the room. What happened here? How did Wells, which was supposed to be so bad, get to be so good. How's a pleasure. How did a bank that everyone had written off come roaring back to life? Isn't this the bank that noted let's nationalize the bank's bear, Nouriel Rubini, went after saying, and I quote, Wells Fargo took over Wachovia. It doesn't work. You can't take two zombie banks, put them together and make a strong bank. Memo to academia. That's what Kramer does. The answer to how they pull it off? Simple. Housing is bottoming. I just act like a child just to amuse them now. <laughs> it's the way you get back at people. Anyway, people are 
are lining up to get mortgages. $100 billion in originations from this one bank alone in Wells Fargo because of its acquisition of Wachovia, the two so-called zombie banks, has become the dominant mortgage player along with Bank of America, which soared more than 30% today. Why is this so important to the overall market? Because what has plagued the government more than any other issue, what has been intractable for friend buddy pal Tim Geithner at the Treasury Department, for Sheila Baer at the FDIC, and for our much hallowed hero Ben Bernanke at the Fed, I'm actually the only guy who actually likes these people. I actually think they're good. Anyway, uh, is that there's, uh, there's been no place to put the bad banks. No banks that are strong enough to hand off the real zombie banks to the ones that can't handle the stress test. No more of that today. Nope. Today's announcement from Wells Fargo, look out, zombie banks. I now calculate to mean that they can earn $2.30 a share. I put a decent multiple on it, and I'm telling you, this stock is trading north of 25. And it can take on any losing bank the government wants to give them. I think the same can now be said about J.P. Morgan, which bought Washington Mutual. I'm glad I own them for my charitable trust, Wells and J.P. Morgan, or else I would feel left out like so many hedge funds today. Here's a shocker. I now believe that Bank of America might be in much better shape than we thought because of its mortgage business. Now, here's one. Don't, bears, put your fingers in your ears. I'm not listening. Go be like the golem in Lord of the Rings. I'm not listening. But Ken Lewis could end up being a hero, not the most vilified executive since John Thane and Dick, Dick Fold, fortunately, left the stage. With this enormous sea change, you can bet that the Wells Fargo's of the world will be buying the brain dead banks left and right. And the government can then, in turn, sell the bad loans that Wells Fargo and the other strong banks don't want to the public-private partnerships that Geithner's establishing. I am telling you right now, from Geithner's one-time biggest critic, that this is a brilliant plan, and it will work. I don't know anyone else who says that. It will work. Because of the transformational nature of Wells Fargo's earnings power, if it weren't for this crisis, believe me, neither Wells nor Bank of America would have been able to take this much mortgage share. They got about 50 percent of the whole nation. You're never supposed to have more than 10 percent of anything when you're a bank. This is a strategy that looked like the NBC show The Biggest Loser. Let no one say I'm not a team player. But now at least could turn out to produce the biggest winners with a government-endorsed happy mortgage oligopoly. That's right. The market's changed. And the bears simply do not want to understand it. But the facts are forcing them to. They thought that the sell-off we saw earlier this week, pure profit-taking, was a sign they were going back to the bad old days, when in fact it was just the sort of shallow pullback that's endemic to bull markets. Something I said immediately, but as I told you, I was a bit bombarded with hate mail. Bombarded with hate mail the next day from the bears. They don't understand. The bears simply do not understand that the market now likes good news and will react accordingly by going higher every time we get another Wells Fargo. And listen up, there will be many more Wells Fargos. And that's why we can rally like this, because stocks mostly reflect the relentless negativity of people like Rubini and that fellow Mike Mayo that I warned you about. The analysts who earlier this week rattled the very bank stocks that rocketed higher with Wells by telling you to sell them all. Told you not to worry about him. Today's market reflects the fact that things have gotten better, that we're no longer in a garden variety depression and could get even better still. And we've got more room to run. Sorry that we had to call out the bears, but we aren't here to make friends with Yogi and Boo Boo. We're here to try and help you make money. We've reached a turning point where the people trying to keep you out of the market are doing you more harm than good now. They're yelling fire in a no longer crowded theater. Even though the sprinkler system has already kicked in, the fire department's arrived, the blaze has been put out. But they're still encouraging you to leave all your belongings behind as you flee the building. And at this point, the bulls are going to steal your stuff and trample you if you try to come back in. Now is not the time to be afraid of stocks. Instead, you should be afraid of the bears who haven't changed their minds, who are still acting like the incredible 24% rally we have. A bull market in itself never happened. Do not let these people scare you out of owning some stocks right now. They don't know what they're saying, and they're not making real arguments. Just relying on innuendo and the fact that anyone who's been bearish over the last year has built up a lot of credibility with the press. The news from Wells Fargo today, game changer. Game changer for the psychology of the market. Finally, a company has proven definitively that banking can still be a massively profitable enterprise. One where you make money every morning when you come into the office and turn on the lights. The bears can no longer write this off as a blip. It's a huge piece of evidence for my contention that things are finally getting better. Here's the bottom line. You cannot wait for the perma bears to come around. Don't wait for the all clear. I am telling you that things are getting better, not worse. The depression is over. The recession still lives. 
But one day soon, that too will pass. Joe.